it's another edition of Health with Patricia. My name is Patricia Roxton Hammond and I'm at Sheep Health Care and Medical Center. Today we're discussing polycystic ovarian syndrome with Dr. Promise Sapuka. He's my guest and he is a consultant obstetrician gynecologist. He's also a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Medical School. Welcome, Doc. Thank you very Thanks much. For the opportunity. It's always a pleasure. Okay, polycystic ovarian syndrome, another deadly thing like fibroids. But I know with dedication, we'll get to know what to do if you should experience anything, yeah. any symptoms in re relation to that. So from the basics, what is polycystic ovarian syndrome? Oh, yes. So, I mean, it's not necessarily deadly. It's just problematic, but not deadly. So, yeah, if somebody has polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's not necessarily deadly at all. Okay. It's, it's just a deadly, lot of uh, yeah, problematic. problematic, yes. Yeah. So it basically refers to an abnormality that affects the ovary. So the ovary is where a woman releases her eggs from. So every woman has two ovaries normally. And so tiny, tiny uh, follicles like balloons develop in the egg, in the ovary, and then they contain the egg. So prior to ovulation, one of those tiny balloons get bigger. That's the dominant one. And when the egg is mature, then it best to release the egg. And that egg is caught up in a tube, travels down the tube, and then when the woman has unprotected sex, the sperm goes up to meet up with the egg, forms the pregnancy we call embryo. That embryo comes down, settles up in the womb, and becomes a baby. That's a normal. But in some group of women, the ovaries are not able to develop that big follicle that will release the egg. As a result, there is tiny, tiny, tiny cysts all over, especially at the outer part of the, of the ovary. And that is what we call polycystic ovary. Poly means multiple cysts affecting the ovary. Is that okay? And so the presence of these tiny multiple cysts would make this ovary look generally a bit bigger than the normal size. And again, this ovary would begin to produce hormones that are more supposed to be more in men. So we have a lot of masculine hormones being produced in that woman. And that affects the woman. She develops beard, hair on the chest. The skin looks a bit thickened. And then 30 to 40 percent of them have difficulty conceiving because they are able to release a big uh, follicle that would release the egg at ovulation and so may require some support in order to get pregnant. Again, because they are not ovulating, that affects the menses. Okay. So some of them have irregular menses. Mm -hmm. The period will come today, this month, two, three months, it doesn't come, it comes again. Another four or five months it doesn't come. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can go on for a year or two years without having a menses. Not necessarily because she's in her menopause, but because she has polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is resulting in hormonal imbalance, which is severe in you know, that the periods are not coming. Is it possible that someone will not have this and still have irregular menses? Yeah, there are some other causes of irregular menses. For instance, some women develop ovarian cysts that affect the hormones. Others just have some hormonal problem. But the commonest cause of the irregular menses is the polycystic ovary syndrome. How is this diagnosed? So like I said, the woman would be having the menses two, three months, it doesn't come okay. in terms. And then that woman will come to hospital and then we ask the other symptoms. Sometimes, after two or three months, she will start having her menses by herself. And some tend to bleed for long because the flow hasn't come. The inside of the uterus has become so thick that it takes so long for the flow to come out. So it can go on for as long means eight days and beyond. Okay. And it can go on for two weeks occasionally or quite often we have to use medications to stop it. Now, the woman may also be obese. They tend to be obese. And then the more obese they are, that also affects the hormones and makes the condition worse. Some, like I said, they tend to develop 
masculine features. Yeah. Like they have a lot of acne because of the male hormone that this produces is called testosterone. And so they tend to have a lot of acne, facial hair, hair on the chest, hairy legs, hairy arms, stuff like that. Okay. So these are the things that will point to us that ah, this one may be having polycystic ovaries. Yeah. Then in order to confirm it, we do some blood tests okay. to see the levels of the woman's hormones. And we do the ultrasound scan to see how the ovaries look like on the scan. And then that leads us to the confirmation. So if I know, how is this managed? If I find out that I have um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, after coming to the clinic and you checking me out, uh, what, what's, what's next? Yeah, I mean, so once we've confirmed it, then the question is, is it an issue of the woman wanting a regular cycle? Or is it that she's been trying to conceive and it's not happening? Okay. okay. And so based on the need at the time to okay. really address it, assuming the woman is overweight or obese, then weight management is crucial in dealing with this condition. Because like I said, the bigger you get, the worse the condition becomes. Okay. Right. And so if you take that the woman has polycystic ovarian syndrome, we commonly refer to it as PCOS. And she's weighing about 80 kilograms today. There is the advice that she should lose between 5 to 10 percent of that weight. As the weight comes down, the hormones improve and the menstrual cycles may become regular by themselves. Okay. Some may require some hormonal pills in order to put the menses back on track alongside working on the weight. We also do some dietary advice where it's advisable to minimize the intake of animal products in general. A lot of meat, egg, cheese, sausage, bacon, you know, all the nice tasting stuff. You minimize the intake of those and a lot of your vegetables and plant based stuff and the fish. Then, if it is the situation that the woman is having difficulty conceiving, then we need to now check. Is the polycystic ovarian syndrome the main reason why she's not able to conceive? Or are there other issues? Okay. For instance, like we said, majority of our women in this part of the world, the problem is from the tubes. It could be tubal problem. At the same time, there is some coexisting polycystic ovarian syndrome. So we check if the tubes are okay. If we have confirmed the tubes are okay, then this woman will need some medication that would make her to ovulate. Okay, so to get rid of the bubbles. Yeah. Bubbles. <laughs> yeah, to make sure we develop one that will reduce the eggs. Okay. And then fertilization can happen. If we do that and that does still not give us pregnancy, then there may be a place to do what we call some form of insemination. When we give the medication or injections and the eggs are mature about to release, they will take the partner's sperm, process it to make it stronger, and then inject it right inside the uterus here. So it just travels a shorter distance to go fertilize the egg. If that does not work, then there's a place for IVF, what we call the in vitro fertilization. I want to ask. Um the last time we discussed fibroid, and you mentioned about the small, small sac like um, growth in the uterus, also called the polyps. Yes, so those are within the inside of the uterus. So that is quite different from the polycystic ovary. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The polyps are inside the lining of the uterus, and they have their own issues they cause abnormal bleeding may be in the way of pregnancy, implanting, or may cause of repeated miscarriages. Yeah. Is it possible that this one treated, like you help the client and she conceives, everything is okay, she tries to conceive again, and you realize that the same thing is repeat, like the way we discussed um, hypertension in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that this can also repeat itself in the next Yes, so like because before she conceives again. It, yeah, you know, so the woman is born with that disorder. So the ovaries have that appearance. Is it genetic? To some extent. Right. 
So if we have difficulty conceiving the first pregnancy and we help for the pregnancy to happen, subsequent pregnancies may happen spontaneously or they may still require some assistance. It varies from one person to the other. Okay. Yeah. So the age, be you as above 35 years? After maybe, okay, let's say the person is 39 and is able to conceive for the first, would you advise the person to continue knowing very well this will still present itself? Well, yes, I mean, the usual advice is for every woman to try and finish having babies by 35, ideally. You know? I hear this. Yes. I hear you say this every day in yes. my mind. I'm like, it's not possible. Well, because in our, with this, our current generation, mm -hmm. We want to build our career yes, first before we well. even start thinking of what yeah, babies. But it's but good for you to know, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. That's it's right. good for you to know. So if the woman is already above 35 and having difficulty conceiving, and we find that it's polycystic ovarian syndrome, of course, we deal with it and the pregnancy happens. It's a matter of, let's wait when she's trying again. If there is difficulty, we need to do something, some form of intervention to help her to conceive. What are the long-term complications if this is not treated? Yeah. So you are not expecting to have a baby. Mm. It's just a normal. Yeah. So life. one of the common problems with a polycystic ovarian syndrome is the risk of endometrial cancer, cancer of the inside of the womb, because if this is resulting in high levels of estrogen. And so the inside of the womb, the lining becomes too thick. And if it stays for too long, then it can become cancerous. Right. That woman also has a tendency to develop diabetes in the future. And also the tendency to develop high blood cholesterol. And that woman also is at risk of obesity. So then, there is an important place for weight management. Will I be right if I sh if I say that most some women with the conditions you mentioned are as a result of this and they don't really know about it? Uh, no, you can't say that unless we check to confirm. Because a lot of persons with hypertension, for instance, diabetes, may just be a family history thing. Not necessarily from polycystic ovarian syndrome. The cancer of the womb, the, the uterus. Yes. Other, other, there are other risk factors, not only polycystic ovarian syndrome. For instance, if somebody has high blood pressure, high levels of cholesterol, and then uh, also diabetic, that three combination raises the risk of the woman developing cancer of the inside of the, of the uterus or the endometrial cancer. So the polycystic ovarian syndrome is one. But there are other risk factors for endometrial cancer. Okay. okay. Uh, honestly, I don't know. So this can just be managed, yeah. but not cured. Yeah. Like I said, it's an important part for weight, weight management. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm. Nice name for deadly. Okay, so that should be problematic. Yeah. Doctor say I should say deadly. Yeah. So it's problematic. Yeah. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. The leading cause of infertility. Irregular menses. Deadly so infertility. Infertility. Mm -hmm. I think that this infertility issue. Where I think so many things. <laughs> anyway, that has been. <laughs> So we spoke about polycystic ovarian syndrome. I believe you have been educated. As I said, this is Health and Patricia. Anytime you need help or you have an irregular menses, um, doctor mentioned, is that, I want to get the word again. Testosterone, or what is it? Testosterone. Testosterone, yeah. The medical word is testosterone. Where you have a bit more of the uh, male features as a hormone. Yeah. Male hormones, yeah. Please, you know the place to be. The one and only Shape Healthcare and Medical Center at Latin Yoboshi. Dr. Promise Sepulga is always available with his team to help you. So please, if you know someone or you are the one experiencing this, please seek help. But at the same time next week, stay blessed.